Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Sarah Kerbiel, and I'm the Emerging Technologies Librarian here at Ben U. Today I'm going to demonstrate a few easy design tools that can save you time and help you create visually appealing print and digital materials. One note before we start looking at some tools. As many of you know, Benedictine underwent a brand refresh this year. If you plan to use the new Benu brand assets, such as the new shield-shaped banner, in your materials, especially if those materials will be externally facing, you'll want to work with the Marketing and Communications Department. They can provide professional guidance on using the brand. If you're not familiar with the changes to the brand, I encourage you to visit ben.edu slash brand. All right, let's get started. Although most of us are not designers by profession, we're often thrown into the role of designer. We have to lay out a clear, visually balanced handout for a class we're teaching, make an eye-catching sign for a student organization fundraiser, post regularly on social media on behalf of a club or business, and usually we have very little time in which to do it. That's why the main tool that I've selected to show you today is Canva. Canva is a simple drag-and-drop editor loaded with flexible templates. Here are a few samples of materials created by library student assistants and library staff. This selection here was created by some of our student workers recently for our book displays, and we'll also use them as digital signage as well. They got the photographs from some other places uh, that I'll be sharing as well, but they put them all together in Canva. Here are a few social media graphics that we created for our Instagram and Facebook pages using Canva. And here is an example handout, as well as some flyers and a Facebook cover, all created in Canva. Whether you, can, whether you think you have an eye for design and just want to speed up the process, or you consider yourself a non-designer, Canva can make you a more confident creator. With a free Canva account, you can access over 8,000 templates, form a team with up to 10 members so you can share items and work together, upload your own images, and store one gigabyte of content. All right, let's get into Canva and start taking a look at the features. When you first go to canva.com, you'll arrive at this page where you're able to create an account. You can sign up with Facebook, Google, or with your email. I signed up with my email, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in now. Once you sign in, you can see your past creations towards the bottom and a list of formats across the top. Your list will look a little different than mine because you, it grabs the ones you most frequently use. Let's go ahead and jump into more to take a look at the full list. We have various social media posts. Each of these have different specific dimensions. So this one, for example, being a square is, is 800 pixels by 800 pixels. So here we have the presentation files, so we have a wide screen, a standard screen, and we also have certificates, resumes, a standard US letter size document, so 8.5 by 11. Here we have additional marketing materials, such as a poster, which is when you print that as a PDF. It's slightly narrower than an 8.5 by 11 sheet, but not drastically different, so I do use that quite frequently myself. Here we have flyer, logo, brochure, various social media banners and covers. And finally, we have invitations, cards, postcards, and tags, which includes name tags. All right, let's head back to the main dashboard. In this case, I'm going to choose poster. I'm selecting poster because it doesn't really matter which type of format you're working with, all of these features will apply. Here along the left, you'll see a list of all of the various layouts. I sometimes also refer to them as templates. These are created by professional graphic designers. Many of them are free. Some of them are paid. And you'll know it's paid if it has this little dollar sign in the lower right corner. But even the paid ones can be great for inspiration. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one. All of the templates are very customizable. So I can go in here 
and I can select the text, put in my own text. Say, for example, I'm running an open mic night. And if my text doesn't quite fit, for example, perhaps I don't want this bottom portion, but if I try to move it, the whole thing comes together. So if I wanted to uh, work with these individually, I just need to select it and go up here and choose ungroup. Click off of it, and from here, I can move around the different pieces, change the size to anything that I want. And you can see you can work like that from there. A lot of these elements, you can change the color, even the illustrations. So, the, so if you click the illustration right there, I can change the color of the various pieces. So I can change the top. I can change the strings. So you can kind of see how you can do that. And the same applies to text as well. You can change the color of your text. And you're not limited to just these colors, I should mention. You can click this, click this plus symbol, and you have the full color spectrum in here. Okay, and you can also add your own hex color code, which we'll be discussing later as well. Okay. So let's take a look at some of the elements that you can add. I'm gonna undo some of that. All right. So let's pop it into elements. You can see you have a lot of different choices here. If you click on grids, for example, you have a lot of these placeholders. If I want to use one of these, I can just drag it right over. And then I can go into my free photos and drag some right over into those spots. Obviously not every photo is going to work with every grid. But you can see how that could be useful. I'm going to go ahead and just undo some of that. Next, frames. Frames are very similar to grids. Let's see. Okay, say for example you want to have one that looks like a looks like a smartphone. You can just grab the smartphone, scroll back up to the photos, and let's drag a photo right on top of it. So you can upload your own photos as well, which I'll show in a minute. And so you can see how that might be useful as well. To delete, you can click the little uh, trash can in the upper right corner, or you can simply drag it right off the page, which is what I tend to do. Okay. You can also add shapes and lines, change the color of those quite easily. And as I mentioned before, you can uh, change the color of many of the illustrations, such as that guitar. But you know, there's a lot of illust other illustrations here as well. Let's see if I go ahead and type in dog. Okay, so here's a free dog I can use. I can drag this right over if I was running a, uh, a such as a, a pet supply drive, for example, or something along those lines. I might use that dog, and then I can go up here, and I can change the color. Oops, I can change the color of that dog to uh, anything that I would need it to be. Okay. Let's take a look at some of the other elements. You also have icons, which are very similar to illustrations, so I won't go into those. And finally, you have charts. So if you'd like to add some data points to your presentation slide or your handout or your um, flyer, you can easily do that once you, you drag it over, and then it'll give you options to add your various data points. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drag that off. We're going to skip text for now and go to background. You can change the background color quite easily by just um, selecting one of these. You can also select various patterns for the background. And then if you want to change the color of that pattern, you can do that as well. This particular layout has this overlay on top of it. I'm just going to slide that right off. And here I have um, selected my background and I can choose to make that a different color if I wanted to. Okay, all right. Finally, you have the text option. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this content on here so I can show you. I'll leave the, I'm going to leave the dog on here, I think. And uh, all right, I'm going to go back to background and just make this a solid color for this. So now I'm going to go to the text element. And I always find this feature quite useful for, uh, for two main reasons. First, you can find a lot of nice font combinations by scrolling through this, this column. If you're like me, you can't always see exactly which fonts go well together. So this is really helpful. Second, the templates help you create a hierarchy. 
By hierarchy, I mean that the most important information is the largest. If everything was the same size or the same brightness on the page, the eye wouldn't know where to focus. So if I scroll down, see if I could find one that I like. This one is nice. I can go ahead and select this combination and drag it right over onto the page. So as you can see, I already have the beginnings of a really nice flyer or handout. So I can go ahead and select the text and add in, okay, say I'm say having a pet supply drive. You know, and it fits okay on the page, but I could actually make this a little bit larger, but I wouldn't want to upset the other areas of this, this grouping, because as you can see, again, they're all grouped together. As I move it, they're like, they move as one. So to, un to ungroup these, I just select it and choose ungroup. And then I'm free to move this a little bit higher and say I would like to bump this up to make each word on its own line. I could do that. It makes it really easy to snap things in place too. I always really like that because you're able to really make sure everything is aligned and looks really nice and professional. And there are many modern fonts to choose from. A wider selection than in something that like you might find in um, in Word or something like that. So, you know, depending on if you're going for a more casual style or a more professional, you can uh, play around with those fonts. So say that you like the layout that you have found in Canva, but you're not crazy about the color palette. Perhaps it's too casual, too formal, or just not uh, quite what you're looking for. There are a lot of sources that you can use for inspiration. One place that I like to turn to is the 100 brilliant color combinations and how to apply them to your designs. This is simply a blog post from 2015 by someone from Canva, but it has, uh, you know, 100 combinations. So I find it um, a useful place to turn to every once in a while. It takes the color inspirations from nature. So sometimes uh, that can be a useful source for the, the type of mood you're going for in your design. Okay. As you may know, Benedictine has its own color palette. If you're creating materials for Benedictine, Canva can help you stay on brand in terms of color, font, and logos. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Benu brand. You can get here by going to ben.edu slash brand. I'm going to go to the color page. And here I have the official Benedictine red, as well as the secondary color palette. Now what to pay attention to here is the hex code. This is the six numbers or letters in combination. This is what you want to pay attention to. You can grab this, these six letters or numbers and get put them directly into Canva. So if I wanted to make the background that particular blue color, I can change the color by clicking this plus symbol. And this is the place where you type that in. Okay, so I know that that one is ABC. 7CA. And now I have that exact color in Canva. You can also load some of these brand colors into your account so that you can access them a little bit quicker without having to type in that code every single time. So if you go back to your Canva dashboard, which is what you see right when you log in, you're going to click your brand. Here you have an opportunity with a free account to upload up to three colors. So I'm going to go ahead and add that same bluish color, ABC7CA, and there I have it. I might also add the Benedictine red and one more color that I use frequently. And then when I go back to my poster, I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page so it'll make sure it'll show up. So if I wanted to change the color of anything, now when I click the color, I see this new category called brand colors where my up to three colors will appear. One thing to be mindful of as you design is color contrast. So say for example, I changed this to the text to white. While low contrast text might look visually appealing in some cases, it can be unreadable for people who are colorblind or have otherwise limited vision. One tool you can use to check your contrast level for accessibility is the WebAIM Color Contrast Checker. In the WebAIM Color Contrast Checker, you can select your foreground color and your background color and see whether it passes the accessibility test. 
So in this case, my background color is that bluish color that we talked about, ABC7CA. And my foreground color is white. I can see it fails as a normal text size, and it also fails as a large text size. So that tells me I should probably not use white on top of this blue color. OK, let's return to those brand guidelines one more time and take a look at typography or font. I'm going to scroll down. If you read over this page, you'll find that Oswald is one of the options that is access acceptable in our brand to use for headers and subheaders. Fortunately, this is a font that is available in Canva. So if I want to stay a little bit more on brand, I can select the text and choose Oswald. There we go. Move some of these down. There we go. Finally, in the brand area, let's take a look at visual identity. This is where we're getting into the area of logos. So you have the Benedictine University logo available to you on this website. You can download it here. I typically download the PNG version because it gives you a transparent background. I've already downloaded it, downloaded this image and uploaded it into my Canva collection of uploads. So this is where you can upload your own image. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the logo and you simply just drag it right over. One nice feature of Canva is that it helps you, it helps prevent you from accidentally uh, stretching out the logo either horizontally or vertically because Typically, in other programs, you would have to hold down shift on your keyboard as you were doing this to ensure it stays the correct ratio. But in Canva, you don't have to do that. So you can just kind of stretch it uh, along and it'll stay the correct uh, ratio. So I'm going to put that in the lower corner and there you go. So you've seen that we can upload images into Canva. Where can you find images that you can upload ethically? Although there are millions of photos publicly available on Google, most retain their copyright. U.S. copyright law provides legal protection for intellectual property. Text, images, videos, etc. are copyrighted as soon as they're created. So you should assume that all materials you find in Google are copyrighted, unless it specifies that it's public domain. Public domain works can be used without the permission of a former copyright owner, making them ideal for many projects, particularly those that will extend beyond educational uses. Where do you find public domain images? Well, one website is Pixabay. Let's go up here and head over to Pixabay. I'm going to go ahead and search for images about healthy eating. Okay. You can ignore the first line. These are all sponsored images, but they have a watermark on them, so it's pretty easy to tell the difference. You can go ahead and scroll down, and you'll see you have an assortment of different stock images that you could draw from. You can also limit it to just photos or just illustrations. So let's take a look. Here's some illustrations we have. All right, so let's go back to all images. In this case, I was going to take the, uh, this image of these blueberries right here. Okay. This where it says CC0 Creative Commons, this means that it is in the public domain, it's free for commercial use, and I don't need to provide an attribution, which means I don't need to uh, provide a credit to the creator of this image. So I would go ahead and click download and I can choose the size that I want and then to click download. And it's downloading into my browser. But I'm gonna close it because I have already downloaded it. All right. So once you've downloaded your image, you could at this point upload it straight into Canva and then drag and drop it right into your design. Or you can first upload it to an image editor. One image editor that's really simple to use is Pixlr Express. Pixlr Express is a fully online photo editor, which means you don't have to install it on a computer. For fast, convenient image editing, Pixlr Express is a nice browser-based option. Once you've saved your image on your computer, you can open it in Pixlr Express by choosing Browse, and then grabbing the picture 
and opening it. From here I can click the different options at the bottom and choose adjustment. From here I, I could, uh, let's see, I could rotate it, I could doodle on top of it, add some contrast, blur, sharpen, any of these options. One I'd like to mention today is a specific overlay. So if you read through the Benedictine brand uh, website, you'll notice that one of the photo options available that's on brand is light leaks. You'd only want to use a light leak in cases where actual sunlight would be invisible. So for example, if I wanted to have a light leak in this image right here, I might add this one here corner. This is a pretty bright, so I can drag down the amount of light streaming in. And maybe I want it to come from the other side, so I move it over there. All right, that looks okay to me. And I'm just going to click Apply. Once I do that, I can save this image. I'm going to go ahead and save this as Blueberry's Light Leak and save. And then we'll save it on my computer. From here, I can go back to my to my poster and I can upload the image. So if I click upload, grab Blueberry's Light Leak, open, and it's loading right here. Wait for that to load. All right, it's done. I can drag it right over here and use it in my design. Once you have finished your design, you're ready to download. So click download and choose your file type. You have a JPEG, which is a compressed image file. This is suitable for uploading to social media or pasting directly into an email. And then you also have PNG, which is a larger file size, but it also supports having a transparent background. And then you have your PDF options. And that about sums up Canva. I hope you find some of these tools helpful in your own design processes, in your student, professional, or personal life. Please feel free to contact me. I'm more than happy to work with you further on this topic or any topic pertaining to educational or creative technology. For questions about the brand, please contact the Marketing and Communications Department. Thank you.